Hey there. Good afternoon, Vinyl community. How y'all doing today? Um, my name is David, and uh, I'm your vicar of vinyl. That's what I'm calling the channel anyway for the time being, starting off that way. And I'll explain that, you know, I'll explain the name um, at some point uh, in the video a little bit later. Um, I just wanted to say hello, and, and this is my first foray into making videos for the vinyl community. I've been watching videos for, I would think, about three years now. And um, I wanted to start, I've been thinking about doing this for years, literally now. Um, and I just haven't gotten around to it. I, I, uh, I was encouraged by others, and I, um, which I will mention in this list of shout outs that I'm about to do. So many great channels out there, and I've been watching so many of you for, for so long. Um, you know, people like Norman Maslow, Mazzy, who doesn't know Mazzy, right? He is the, he is a, one of the top channels in the vinyl community without a shadow of a doubt. Um, incredibly knowledgeable, great stories about his youth and, um, growing up in San Francisco and all that great stuff. I love when people bring a personal element to it. And I'm going to try to do the same, um, you know, Psychedelic has been a great channel. 45 RPM audio file uh, in Germany. He's really interesting to listen to and watch. Cosmic Vinyl. Cosmic Brian. Are you kidding me? Cosmic Brian. That guy is outrageous. Fabulous. Amazing energy. Does great videos. So much fun watching his work. Um, the Vinyl Rundown. Just Various Vinyl. The Omaha Introvert. Hannah there. I've been in touch with through Instagram and... Uh, on Facebook, I've actually sent her a package. My first VCLT went down to Hannah and um, uh, sent her four or five records. I, I don't know exactly how many now. Uh, Brian's Vinyl Records, Melinda Murphy, Oddbox, Topper, Ron Haggerty, Happy Hippie, Eric Weinbender, 8 Vinyl O, Emma over there, The Vinyl Verse with Bill, the nicest guy in the vinyl community, no doubt about it. Um, Gary's Vinyl Dungeon. I, I remember watching him for a bit. I don't know where Gary is. I think he's, I don't know what's happening there. There's a lot of space in between videos, much like Hannah. <laughs> but Hannah's been, uh, she's been ramping it up lately, back, uh, back into the fray. Vinyl Richie, man, I mean, you know, I, I started watching him a couple years ago and fabulous, fabulous, uh, content creator. Jeff Kempen, Noble Records, you know, Aaron Mother Alomar. That old goes vinyl. Miss Lady Soul, a fellow, uh, fellow. She's uh, another Canuck there. I, I am a Canuck. I'll get into that in a minute. Um, you know, t tunes from the man cave. Your boy Chris, of course. Naz Nomad. Um, you know, I don't know. It's there's tales from the crate. There's so many channels. I can go on and on. I'll be here the next week if I do. I wanted to give those shout outs. I wanted to give a whole bunch more, but again, um, in the interest of time, I'll, I'll give those shout outs at another time. Um, so many reasons why I wanted to do this and, you know, maybe just a, I'll start with a little bit about myself and where I come from. Born and raised Toronto area. Um, so I'm a Toronto guy, Canuck and, um, my mu music has always been a huge part of my life. Uh, ever since I was around nine years old, I would think it really started to be uh, one of the number one things that mattered to me most. I got involved with drum corps, and I know down in the States, drum corps is an enormous thing. And um, it is, uh, we have a version of it up here, or we did. We don't really have that anymore in Canada so much, but we had a version of it in Canada and, um, and there was smaller, but the culture is the same and music is everything in that culture. And I was one of the youngest in the core. So when you have four, you know, people uh, that are drummers, um, and you've now, you know, become drumming has become a big deal to you. Drum, the instrument of drumming or the instrument of drums is your number one thing. 
and you've got kids that are four or five years older than you and what they're listening to and you know and, and so you're highly impressionable and um but the good news was what they were listening to was always evolving and changing and i was getting exposed to so many things at such a young age that uh it um it was an enormous it had an enormous impact on my life so there it is i am a drummer amateur drummer of course my whole life i've never done it professionally i work in the film industry um but i love music i love drumming i love being in bands it is um it is you know you get the biggest charge out of it and uh the camaraderie of it and just sitting and jamming and making music is one of the greatest things in the world and then cut to my love of vinyl um the last band i was in uh, we actually called ourselves, and here's the why the channel name is uh, Vicar of Vinyl. It um, I was in a band called Vickers of Vinyl, and uh, we gig quite a bit. Had a lot of great gigs around Toronto, but um, so that hence the name of the channel. I by no means claim to be the Vicar of Vinyl or the High Priest of any in any way. There are channels in the vinyl community that uh, already claim that and they're incredibly good at it. I just kind of like the name Vicar of Vinyl. Got that V of V kind of thing going on. But I thought that I would at least try to start this thing with um, kind of a vinyl finds video, I guess. Being in Toronto, we went into lockdown again last week and at the time I decided, okay, I'm going to run back out on the last day and uh, see what I could grab. And I grabbed some things. Now, I think one or two of these things I'm gonna show are from that um, that last run. But the other three, I'm only gonna do five. I figured, first video, I don't wanna make it a big long to do. The other thing you'll notice is that I'm not showing my face and I'm hoping this isn't too boring staring at my um, stack of records here. Um, I don't know exactly why yet. Um, I wanted to try this out and see if it is something that works for everybody. If you know, if it works for me, I, I don't know if it's a self-conscious thing being on camera right now, thinking too much about it. This way, I'm able to just not worry about where I'm looking so much and just think and and just you know talk about the records and not get in the way of the records for me anyway. And, so, without further ado, this I found about three or four weeks ago. You know, this is the very first Paul McCartney record I've ever owned. Um, I have Beatles, of course, and I have Wings. Uh, I just have never owned his solo work. And um, so it's great to find this. It was a great find. Just reaching over here for the record itself. Um, I guess this is what his second record as a solo artist, uh, the Ram record. Here's the back side of it. There, um, I'll open up the gatefold here. And there's that, which is a great gatefold. Um, always was. Uh, great record. I haven't been able to, I haven't cleaned or, and so there I, I haven't spun it. Um, but um, unfortunately, it's the Black Capital label. So this is Canadian pressing. I believe it's 1976. It is not an original 71 cause, because that would have been on the Apple label. A little dirty inner sleeve there. I'm going to have to get that uh, out of the way once I clean this. Put it in my, one of the MoFi sleeves and discard this. But um, anyway, this was a, a pickup. I yeah, as I said about three weeks ago. Glad I grabbed it. Um, looking forward to having the opportunity to spin it and uh, see how it sounds. He put it on for me in the store and um, sounded good there. So I wasn't able to listen to the whole thing, but from what I heard, pretty good. All right, next up on the vinyl finds again. I think this was the, actually, I'm pretty sure I found this the same day. 
as the uh, Paul McCartney Ram album, I found this Adrian Ballou, the debut Lone Rhino. Um, Adrian Ballou, what can I say about that guy? I think I was first introduced to him due to the lineup of King Crimson, starting with those three records, Discipline, Beat, and Three of a Perfect Pair. Adrian, uh, I think, I guess that Discipline was 1981. This is 1982, this debut. And, wow, what a guitarist. Love the voice, love the guitar. Um, of course, he played with Frank Zappa and David Bowie and Talking Heads, and I'll go into that in subsequent videos. I just wanted to um, tell you all that, yeah, my first introduction to Adrian Ballou would have been with the lineup of King Crimson with Adrian, Robert Fripp, Tony Levin, and Bill Bruford on the drums. Bill Bruford, wow. There's not a lot I can say about that guy without... I mean, the guy is one of the finest prog rock, rock, whatever you want to call him. He's one of the best drummers out there in that world. Uh, love the artwork on this record as well. Um, just a fabulous... You know, obviously, you know, this is uh, a little bit of postal, post work done on this. Adrian's not standing in front of that rhino, but just a great, great image. Here's the label, of course, the, uh, the island label. This is 82, and I believe, yeah, this would have been a an original. Um... So I'm glad I found this. I've had it on CD for years. I just haven't found it on vinyl until now. That's not true. I have seen it and uh, just in beaten up shape. So I'm glad I picked up a nice clean copy. Next. Now this is an example of one of those moments when you're in the store. And you see it. You grab it. You come home and you realize, oh shit, I already have this. But a nice little happy mistake though, this Thelonious Monk Crisscross record, I do actually own, um, but and I own a Canadian pressing of it, an original Canadian pressing, but it's in stereo. And this is a mono. So when I got home, I didn't realize that right away. And I got home and I went, oh man, this is a mono. Thelonious Monk Crisscross. So I'm very pleased with that. Released in 63 on the um, 2i Columbia label. What a fabulous label that is. And this is an original Canadian. And I just love the weight of it. You can feel the weight of that vinyl from 63. What a difference it is. Um, on the back side of this, I've always loved that image of Thelonious. A little beaten up there, you can see in the uh, in the face there, but um, the cigarette dangling, the uh, the silhouetted kind of image of Thelonious is just fabulous. What a great record this is. Uh, I am, I do, I am a big jazz fan. I have been expanding the collection for years now. It, um, it has taken a while. I got back into vinyl, I guess. It was eight years ago when I collected the vinyl off my brother that was keeping, you know, he was housing it for us. When we stopped, I guess, in about 1988, 89. And then things switched to CDs, you know, and we now all have these, you know, I don't know, I've got seven or 800 CDs and uh, uh, nothing like Mazzy. Holy smokes, man. That guy's collection, both vinyl and CDs, is staggering. But, um, you know, when he switched over to CDs, the vinyl stopped. So I collected that off my brother about eight years ago, got it home. And uh, I've been buying ever since and um, adding to the collection, expanding. And the jazz really has ramped up. And I'm really happy I found this Thelonious Monk record. It's uh, it's a beauty. It really is. If you haven't heard Chris Cross... I think it was a second release off of when he, the Columbia years for him. Yeah, I believe it was. 
with John Orr on bass, Frankie Dunlop on drums, Charlie Rouse on tenor sax, dynamite stuff. All right, what are we moving to now? All right, so this one, this is one of the ones I found last day of the, just before the lockdown last week, and I went up to Cops, which is a local record store on a street called The Danforth in Toronto. They have a couple of locations. They have Queen Street location, Danforth location, and there's a third location out in a city called Oshawa, which is just east of Toronto, about 45 minutes or so. Uh, Love Over Gold, Dire Straits. So I already owned Love Over Gold, Dire Straits, Canadian pressing, but I saw this. It's an original UK on the uh, mighty Vertigo label. Just a fabulous record. Um, man, I, I, everyone knows Brothers in Arms, and no one needs to go into how big a record that was. But for me, Dire Straits was so much more than Brothers in Arms, of course. And to anyone who's, you know, listened to Dire Straits, I got introduced to them again as a drum corps world and um, an older sibling of a friend had um, put on the debut and I was hooked right out of the gate. Um, uh, Mark Knopfler, <laughs> what can you say about Mark Knopfler's guitar work and, and love his vocals, love his guitar, of course. Pick Withers on drums, you know. I love everything Pick Withers did with Dire Straits. I also have, what do I have? I think I'm missing I'm missing one record. Um, it's the last one. What the hell is the name of it? On Every Street. Just looked it up. On Every Street. That studio release I do not have. And I do have Alchemy, the live record, but I don't have On the Night. The second live record, I think, in the early 90s is one I'd really love to pick up. So that's... Dire Straits, Love Over Gold. And now, um, again, same day as Dire Straits find, I found this. I now, again, I owned it on the Canadian and the Canadian version, but I found the original Octagon, Rolling Stones, Through the Past Darkly. Uh, you know, what a crazy die cut. Who does that? It's still a bizarre stop sign outer sleeve it's just uh it's wild um had to have it on the deca label out of the uk love that back cover too and here of course is the the blue deca label this was 1969 is that right i believe it is and i do think that this was the first rolling stones comp i had ever heard I was going through that, going through the inventory of Stones records, and I'm pretty sure a buddy of mine had this, and this is the first comp I ever heard by the Stones. A buddy of mine, a Dan, who I'm um, still good friends to this day, he introduced me to the Stones, you know, uh, really. I mean, I had heard the hits, and I, you know, I just hadn't dug deep into the... the um, the catalog, and he was a Stones fan at an early age, and um, what can you say about this? I mean, you know, all these great tracks, 2,000 Light Years From Home was the first time I ever heard that was off of this record. I was 11 years old, and I was just tripped out. What on earth is this track? What is this all about? Amazing. Um, you know, Mother's Little Helper, Street Fighting Man, Jumpin' Jack, of course, Let's Spend the Night Together. Just a fantastic compilation. I'm hoping I can, you know, I all obviously I'm going to delve into artists more deeply in subsequent follow-up videos and going through the Stones collection. You know, I've seen Mazzy do these ranking uh, videos, which is, I, I can't even wrap my head around that. Um, it's amazing that you can. And he always makes it very clear, which I love, that this is just, you know, this is his opinion. This is not, you know the opinion is not everyone can have a shifting what your number one or what your number four or what your number five is 
So I'll try, I just have a hard time ranking records. Like I have, you know, I don't know, 28 or 29 Stones records. How am I going to get those down to, well, I could probably get them down to 10 or 12, but actually ranking them 10 to 12, uh, sorry, from 12 to 1 or 10 to 1, that's a tough thing. I mean, some girls and Tattoo You and Let It Bleed and Sticky Fingers and Exile on Main Street. I mean, all those amazing records. That's a tough one to actually separate, like five, four, three, two, one. But anyway, I, I love that he does them. It's uh, fun to watch. And um, I'll be able to, you know, delve into other artists that um, in subsequent videos like that and get into album by album. But just thought I'd start with a, just a quick five pack of recent finds. And um, I'm looking forward to doing more. And what you think about the format of just concentrating on the records and me kind of getting out of the way. Anyway, hope you like the video. Um, make a comment in the comment boxes below and hope to uh, chat with you soon. Later.